Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the 2019 FIDE World Team Championship. It's India versus Russia. We already said that this will be uh, quite a matchup. Now for Russia, this match doesn't really hold any significance uh, ranking wise. Russia already uh, won first place basically in the pen ultimate round, uh, having uh, having three points advantage ahead of everyone else. But for India, it's a different case since uh, India really uh, started, uh, China really started doing well and uh, well. India would really like to win this match uh, to, um, you know, uh, win at least at least uh, third or, or second place um, in, the, in the in the championship. Uh, but for Russia, you know, any, anything can happen. They are just here to enjoy chess, and I think that's uh, the 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 best game that uh, you can play when, when you're playing in a championship. So uh, we do have uh, a couple of photos, although uh, it's the same one from the previous video. So I'm not going to show it now. I'm going to show it later. I know it's uh, it's weird. We always have a nice Grishuk photo when he's not playing a game. When but when he's playing a game, then we don't have any. Uh, you know uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, but okay, uh, Grishuk has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, let me just fix that. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4. We have e6, knight to f3, and now d5. We transpose into the uh, queen's gambit declined. Knight to c3 and bishop to b4. The rug goes in defense. Uh, we have c captures, pawn captures, and the bishop to g5, pinning the knight here, and now e uh, the immediate h6, asking do you want to trade, uh, or do you want to go back. We have bishop to h4, uh, castles by uh, Seturaman, and now comes e3. Sorry, e3. Uh, we have bishop to f5, queen to b3 now, attacking the bishop. Now, either the bishop will go back, but then you lose the b7 pawn. So you do have to capture here. We have bishop captures, queen captures, and this position has been reached plenty of times. Uh, there is a very uh, very famous game, Mamedyarov versus Carlsen, where Carlsen uh, went knight bd7. That game uh, ended in a draw. Uh, it was played last year in 2018 in, in the European Club Cup Championship. Uh, but here we have g5, and it's also a known move. Uh, bishop to g3, and now knight to e4, attacking the queen, but also pressuring the bishop here on g3. And here we have queen captures on c7. Black sacrifices a pawn for some uh, activity. And uh, there's also uh, a known game, Ding Liren versus Aronian, uh, that uh, ended in a draw in 2017, played in Palma de Mallorca. Ding Liren continued with knight to c6. But here we have the immediate queen captures on c7. Uh, and okay, bishop captures, and only now, knight to c6 and bishop to b5. White now wants to capture here. Uh, and, uh, well, there's not all that much black can do. Uh, we have rook f to c8 going after the bishop, and here bishop captures on c6. Now, which bishop do you capture? Well, of course, you do want to capture the light square bishop as your d5 pawn is hanging. So, pawn captures and bishop to a a5. Uh, we have rook to... Uh, rook 8 to b8, pressuring the b2 pawn, and now b4. And uh, if you look at this position, uh, white now has a, well, a somewhat weird bishop on a5. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, with the b4 pawn and the d4 pawn, you have uh, an excellent c5 outpost uh, for, well, maybe your knight in the future, but also you are preventing black from pushing c5 himself. So uh, if you take that into consideration, black now has a backwards c6 pawn, which is a weak pawn. And the white will well uh, try to try to do something uh, about it. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we have knight to d6. Black now wants to attack the bishop and uh, well make uh, make some activity for his rooks. Uh, knight to d2. Grishuk is just in time to prevent this. We have knight to b7 and now knight to b3. And here, while you can capture after pawn captures, you're still not gaining any activity. You can you cannot use the b file due to the knight, and the knight and pawn still control the c5 square, so c5 will never be an option. Uh, so first we have bishop to c2 by Sturman, uh, attacking the defender of the bishop here, but now just uh, knight to c5. Here Grishuk is asking, uh, do you want to capture the bishop or the knight? Uh, you could capture the bishop, and after bishop ca pawn captures rook to b2, you gain a lot of activity. And it, it does seem to be playable, uh, but uh, Seturman decides for a different option. He goes knight captures on c5. Uh, we have d captures, now the b file is still closed, and now rook to e8, hoping for uh, rook e4 to c4. Uh, we have a4 by Grishuk, now comes bishop to f, bishop back to f5, uh, queenside castle, and now rook to e4. And now Grishuk blocks the rook, rook to d4. Uh, we have rook captures, pawn captures, and now bishop back to d7. 
uh, helping out with the, def the the defense, b5 might be an option in some situations uh, if the rook ever leaves the b file. So king to d2, we have rook to e8 now taking control of the only open file on the board and now bishop to c7. Uh, we have f6 by black, uh, and now comes f3. Uh, Grishuk is uh, reluctant to go rook to e1. Uh, black would happily trade rooks. Black is down a pawn, but it's a it's an opposite color bishop endgame. And while those uh, can be won, it, uh, this one would most likely be a draw. Uh, so here we have a6 by black uh, f with further control against the d5 square, b5 square, g4. Uh, I meant g4. Uh, king to g7, black just improves, and rook to c1. Black can't really, black doesn't have an active plan here, black can just wait, he's down a pawn. Uh, if, uh, you know, if Grishuk doesn't uh, pull anything off, uh, it, it will most likely be a draw, so it's basically up to white uh, if he will attempt something. And here, rook to c1 already uh, is a very threatening move. For example, if you play a waiting move, let's say king g6, then b5 is a threat. Uh, because now after captures, captures, and captures, you get c6. Now the bishop has to move. Uh, you go bishop d6, now you prepare to push your pawn, and after rook here, uh, pawn here, uh, you, your bishop and rook will be stuck for the rest of the game, keeping an eye on the c8 square, and it will be just a terrible position for uh, uh, for black to be in. Your, you can just bring the king deeper into the position, move, let's say move the bishop, then bring the king all the way in. Uh, white will just be much better, or most likely even winning. So, after rook to c1, uh, Saturman of course does not uh, allow this, we have rook to e6, reinforcing the c6 square, uh, and now just h3. Uh, and now we'll have a couple of, you know, uh, testing moves, king f7, bishop back to g3, we have bishop to e8, bishop to f2, uh, bishop to d7, bishop to e3, king g7, and now f4. Uh, Grishuk now wants to trade down all of the pawns on the king side and focus on the game on the queen side, and somehow, somehow, uh, try to get some activity for his rook. G captures on f4, we have bishop captures on f4, king to g6, and now bishop back to e3. King back to g7, king e2, king to g6, king to f2, uh, bishop to e8, and now king back to e2. We have bishop back to d7, again, black is waiting to see if white is interested in taking a draw. And I do have to mention that um, while they are playing this game, uh, the other games between, uh, well, Russian and Indian players uh, are, are really crazy. Okay, Karakin and Adiban on board one, it was pretty much a, pretty much a solid draw, but uh, all the other games uh, were really crazy. We're going to mention that a bit after, uh, after this game. Uh, king to f3, bishop back to e8, king f2. Uh, the move 40 has been reached, so time control has been reached, and uh, players have been granted additional time. Bishop d7, king, king e2, bishop e8, king d3. Bishop back to d7, bishop d2, king g7, just bishop to f4, king g6, and now bishop to g3. King g5, bishop to e1, uh, bishop to e8, and now bishop to d2 check. Here, something finally happens. Grishuk is ex asking, uh, do you want to go here and make this pawn trade where I can go g5 and try and trade everything off? Let's say king g4, captures, captures, and then I will transfer the game over to the queen side, maybe try and activate my rook. Uh, Seturaman is not interested, he goes king back to g6, and now we have rook to f1. Uh, and okay, king back to g7, now comes h4, bishop to d7, and here finally g5. Uh, Grishuk is now successful in his attempt to trade off everything on the king side. Uh, f captures, we have pawn captures, and now not captures, but rather h5, black still wants to... Uh, keep the king side closed. Uh, we have bishop to f4, now comes king to g6, and now a very nice move, bishop to e5. Uh, where if you capture the pawn, now you get rook to f7, and, uh, well, you have to move the bishop, and then rook a7 picks up this pawn. Black, of course, does not want to allow this. So we have bishop back to e8, now comes king e3, king captures on g5, and now rook to g1 check. Uh, we have king to h6, now comes rook to g8. Finally, uh, Grishuk temporarily gives back the pawn, although it will be very hard to hold on to it, but he manages uh, to, to, to activate his rook. Uh, rook to e7, uh, we have king, king, back, uh, king to f4, uh, rook, to, uh, rook to f7 check, king back to g3, rook to e7 back, just king to h4. Uh, now preparing this check to pick up the pawn, and only then will Grishuk try and figure out how to switch his pieces over to the queen side. Uh, we have rook um, 
uh, to e6 with rook to h8 to check as planned, king to g6, and now rook captures on h5. So as we mentioned, the pawn sacrifice was only temporary. Uh, the pawn is picked up, and now, well, you have to try again and get this rook somehow over to the queen side. Uh, rook back to e7, we have rook to g5 check, king f7, and now king to g4. Uh, king to e6, we have rook to g8, uh, now comes king to f7, and now rook to h8. King to g6, we have rook to f8, now cutting the king off uh, from uh, from the f-file. Bishop d7 check, king to g3, uh, and here, uh, well, you don't want to allow uh, rook uh, to, to, to go over there. And if you try something like rook to e8, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's possible, but not really... Mm, something of course white will not trade you will first give a check uh, after the king moves now you will force the bishop to move and after the bishop moves you will go to a7 uh, and start uh, you know uh, gobbling up the pawns uh, from from the queen side and if black will try really hard to defend it you can even just bring your king into the game uh, so here we have a different idea here bishop to a8 is played uh Saturman just closes uh, the uh, the eighth rank from grishuk's rook uh, but it doesn't work here grishuk perfectly set up the position everything is you know where it's supposed to be uh feel free to pause the video here and try to find the winning move for white uh, i'll give you a couple of seconds as usual uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, winner of uh, FIDE World Team Championships. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move you have to play now is B5. It was a threat somewhere uh, some 50 moves ago, but uh, now it also becomes a threat because the rook now occupies the final rank. Uh, or the 8th rank, and it, uh, well, the idea becomes again possible. A captures, A captures, this was played, uh, you don't want to allow B6, so C captures, and now comes C6, and this is the problem. The king is on G6, and if you capture, you get rook to F6 check, you, the bishop gets picked up, uh, and, uh, well, white will just have a winning endgame. Black will be able to harass white a bit, but sooner or later, uh, both of these pawns will be lost, and the game is now won. Uh, so after c6, Saturman tried b4, uh, but now just c7. We have bishop to d7, and here uh, uh, Grishuk played c8. He brought the queen immediately into the game, but uh, there were also some uh, possibilities of ideas like rook to f6 check, and then if, let's say, king g5, rook d6, uh, threatening captures, and then if rook recaptures, you then bring a queen into the game, or if you block, uh, then just bishop f6 check picks up the rook. Uh, which was one way to go. Uh, Grishuk chose a different line. He, he chose pawn to c8 and uh, he brought a queen into the game. Bishop captures. We have rook captures. Now uh, white is up uh, up a piece. Uh, rook to b7 and now comes... Uh, well, it's interesting what comes now. Again, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the easiest way to you know convert your advantage into a full point. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who found rook to b8, uh, that's a terrible move. If you found rook to b8, then black will just capture it. And after b3, you have no ways of stopping the pawn, as your own d4 pawn is preventing you from uh, controlling the b2 square. So hopefully none of you found that move. But if you found something like king to f4, uh, the only move that wins, then congratulations, you are yet again an excellent player. You just made the room for your rook. You're threatening this check. Rook is coming over to g1 and then to b1, and then the pawn is stopped. So here b3 was played, we have check, uh, king has to move, rook to g1, b2, and now rook to b1. Uh, the pawn is now stopped, and as the bishop is nicely controlling the pawn on d4, the, the pawn is controlling the bishop on e5, uh, this is, you know, uh, rock solid. The king now just has to come here, pick up the pawn, and uh, continue playing the game. The game continued, king g6, we have king e3, king f5, king to d3. Uh, rook to b5, now just king to c3, rook b7, and now finally uh, rook captures on b2. Black, of course, cannot trade. If you trade, you lose the game. So black tried rook to h7, but now just rook e2. Uh, rook to e7 was played, uh, and king to b4, and, uh, well... It was in this position on move 85 that Saturman uh, resigned the game. And uh, this victory by Alexander Grishuk uh, did not bring Russia first first place here, uh, but it did bring them a, a victory over India uh, in this in this very intense match. Here we can show one line that wins. Let's say you have to make a move. King g4, now just king c5. You bring a king into the position. 
And if black will try to defend the pawn, you just attack it and now just rook f2, whatever black plays. Uh, you can't attack the rook because you no longer have pressure against the pawn, but here after any move black makes, you just go, let's say, rook f6. Uh, or, or even better, you can go rook uh, rook f7 to go here, uh, king to g4, now you can, you can just block, and after the rook moves, wherever the rook goes, you can just capture the pawn. Now you just move the king and the pawn queens, there's not much black can do here, not, nothing at all. So yeah, after king to b4, uh, Saturman resigned the game, and uh, let's just check this out. Uh, these are the the results uh, from all the boards, Russia versus India. Uh, like we said, uh, mentioned Karakin versus Ariban, it was a pretty pretty solid draw. Uh, then Nipomnishi versus Ganguly, it was really a crazy game. Uh, Nipomnishi was down down a piece, and he was supposed to lose. Uh, Ganguly had a winning position, but Indians somehow, uh, you know... And Nepo worked his magic and uh, ended up getting a draw. Uh, Andrekin versus Aravind. Andrekin was also winning in, at one moment, but uh, he, he didn't find the, the correct continuation. The game ended in a draw. And then you have this game, Grishchuk Seturman, which was most likely the most drawish game of them all, uh, and the, the only game that ended in a win. So, once again, uh, you know, chess is funny like that. That will happen. Uh, you know, uh, it was the, the the game that was least likely to not end up in a draw uh, and ended up in a win. Uh, yeah, something like that. So, <laughs> yeah, and here we have the standings after, uh, you know, the final round. Uh, Russia in first place with 16 match points. Again, three points ahead of everyone else. Uh, England in second place with 13. And you have China who has overtaken India uh, with third place. So uh, China wins the, the, the bronze trophy. Uh, India, unfortunately, no trophies for them, even though they played an excellent tournament and only uh, only succumbed to Russia in the final round. And uh, it was amazing. No one thought that China even had a chance of winning uh, winning any prizes because they had a terrible start, but then, you know, everything just started uh, go going in their favor. Uh, then, okay, uh, fifth place USA, 6th uh, place Iran, 7th place Azerbaijan, 8th uh, place Kazakhstan, ninth place Sweden, and in last place we have Egypt. So there we have it, the final standings of the 2019 World, uh, FIDE World Team Championship. Uh, from the open section, uh, we will go, we are going to check up uh, on some of the games from the women's section as well. And if I manage to uh, find any any nicer ones, I will show them. Uh, if you have any suggestions from the women's section, feel free also to use hashtag suggestion uh, to help me, you know, locate some uh, some nicer games. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, for the end, uh, I promised you a nice Grishuk photo. Maybe if you haven't seen my previous video, there you have it. Let's just enjoy it for a second. Uh, and yeah, uh, like I said, tomorrow feel free to tune in uh, at uh, 6 p.m. Central European time. Uh, we're going to have a nice leeches tournament. Uh, I, w I will be streaming it. Uh, I will not be having uh, a lot of time tomorrow, so I will probably stream for like an hour and a half. Uh, but we are going to repeat that tournament every Friday, and then uh, w I, I will be trying to get back into streaming. Uh, we're you know we're gonna have a tournament and then I'm gonna accept accept some challenges. We're gonna have some fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty awesome, uh, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, and also uh, this second video today came a bit earlier because I will be uploading the third video today. It will be the subscribers video 2019. You've been waiting for it for such a long time. Uh, so just to, you know, mention that as well. And of course, I would like to thank Benito Camela, Roy Branford, uh, Helio de Meira Linz Neto, uh, Hunter Eichen, and uh, Steven Stavrakis for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content. Uh, we are now continuing the Capablanca saga very soon. And of course, I I'm checking up on your suggestions as usual. Thank you all, and have an excellent rest of your day. And I will see you soon.